A team from Cricklade tried to climb the highest mountains in England, Scotland and Wales. They were doing it in memory of their friend, 26-year-old Wayne Wilson, who died from leukaemia in January. The group was led by a friend of the show, Damien Davis. Good morning, Damien. Morning, Graham. I've heard it didn't go to plan. Well, we started from the foot of Ben Nevis. And, and we spoke to you last week, just before you were off to Scotland to climb Ben Nevis. You are going to do Ben Nevis, Snowden and Scarfell Pike. That's or, right. Yeah. And we, we'd taken a crucial wrong turn at a fork in the path. And it wasn't until we got very close to the top that we realised the error of our ways. <laughs> you climbed the wrong mountain. Ben Nevis has a lovely little monument at the top that says, Welcome to Ben Nevis, this is the highest mountain in the UK. Yes. When we got to the top of our one, which was a lot steeper than we'd imagined it to be, we suddenly realised this was not in fact Ben Nevis. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so you, you got your three peaks challenge. First peak, you've muffed it. What happens now? Do you give up? No, we thought we'd uh, persevere. We said, right, let's crack on. We'll go and do Scaffold Pike and see if we can get that and Snowden in still within 24 hours. Yeah. And um, we made our way down to the Lake District. We got there two hours after our initial planned start time. Not bad, though. No, not bad. But then I slipped and twisted my ankle. So um, I I'm made not, a... Don't mean to laugh, Damien. I'm sorry. No, <laughs> it was quite painful at the time. I bet I, it was, yeah. I had to make an emotional decision there and then mm -hmm. to turn back because I didn't want to hinder the team. Right, OK. Very know, chances noble, like it. that bloke with Scott. Yeah, OK. Yeah. <laughs> um, but then... Um, Two of the other lads made it back shortly after me, um, also with injuries. So how, how many did that leave to climb Scarfell Bay? Two. Two, OK. So the youngest two, Mike Murray, uh, yes. who had done it before with Kevin and myself in training, yes. and Carl, as you know, Wayne's brother. Yes. So waiting back at the minibus is myself, Kev and James from the climbing team, uh -huh. Carl's mum and dad, right. and Kevin the driver. Yeah. And we thought, right, at the pace they were going, they've got to be back by 10pm, just, right. just as darkness was falling. And you've still got uh, Snowden to climb, yeah. Yeah. But by midnight, there was no sign of them, and we were quite worried. So we, we rang Mountain Rescue. Um, they did a full risk assessment, and they advised that the guys were probably had gone to ground. They'd had no distress signals sent, and because, obviously, we had all the right survival kit, they made the risk assessment that the guys would be fine. So in the morning, me and um, Carl's dad, Den, um, we basically climbed Scaffold Pike at first light, 4.30 in the now, morning. Now, you would have been quite worried at this stage for oh, them. We were extremely worried. Yeah, yeah. So this would have been, I mean, this, you know, all the laughing has stopped now, hasn't it? Yeah. Now this, yeah, serious. So, so Carl's dad and myself climbed Scaffold Pike first thing in the morning at first light. We went right to the top and bottom, no sign of them. We rang emergency services again, and sure enough, they've reported themselves missing at a pub in a remote village the other side of the Lake District. Well, how did they get there? They'd gone up the mountain, obviously darkness had fallen, they'd seen where some lights were, assumed it was where we were, and by the time they got back down the bottom, they realised they were the other side of the mountain. <laughs> it took us an hour and a half to drive round the Lake District to go and pick them up. OK, so the Three Peaks Challenge, you, you, you've blown it with, with Ben Nevis, you've climbed the wrong mountain. Yeah. Um, your team has made Scarfell Pike, two of them. Yeah. Well, that one's a kind that's a success. Yeah. It's a drama, but a success. OK, what about Snowden? Well, we were already six hours behind the total finish time um, by the time we left the Lake District. So we abandoned the mission and went back to our auction and raffle. And in Cricklade. Yeah, in Cricklade. And we told our story to the amusement of all the locals. <laughs> Um, but we raised nearly £10,000. You raised nearly 10000 and everyone is who sponsored you is still going to pay up, are they? Well, we, we had a couple of people who um, jokingly said they wanted a refund, or at least a third of it, um, but I think most people are stood by their original pledge. <laughs> yeah, and that's great, and that's all for leukaemia research. All for leukaemia research, yeah. So, uh, <laughs> what do you think Wayne would have thought of it all? I think he would be <laughs> beside himself. <laughs> Rolling around laughing. He wouldn't have wanted a better reason. He wouldn't have wanted you to do it. He would have wanted all this kind of stuff. He would have wanted a story. You're yeah. going to get more publicity now well, because of this than if you'd actually done it. Hero, they? Everyone loves a failure. Yeah. You, this is going to be a bigger deal. You may even make more money because of this than if you'd done it properly. We may well do. <laughs> all right. Hey, well, thanks for letting you letting us uh, Graham, follow your programme. Thank program. you to you and all your colleagues at BBC. You've oh, we've just us all the way through this. We've just been enjoying the journey. story, David. Now, have you got any more challenges? or is this it now? Well, we've got some more up our sleeve, although okay. I think a few people would like to see us actually do the three peaks before they sponsor us. Don't, on please, Mr. David, for me, don't do the three peaks. It's not to be. <laughs> All right, Graham, for pick, you, we'll do something different. Do something, pick something easier. Pick pick three, three. I don't know, foothills in Wiltshire or well, something. We, we did say the next three we'd attempt would be Common Hill, London Hill, <laughs> and Blooming Hill. <laughs> 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 Damien and Davis from Team Wayne, thanks. Great to catch up with you Thank again, you mate. And well done raising all that money.
It's the first chance for Wildcats fans to see the club's new signings in action. Thanks very much, Deb. That's your sport? Yes, that's your, is that what I was supposed to <laughs> no, say? No, no. <laughs> no, there's not what you're supposed to say. That's that's just... I that's... thought if I batted my eyelashes at you, you'd start well, talking. I, I thought you were flirting, uh, so well, I thought, obviously. well, this is embarrassing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What have potholes and custard got in common? Well, you'll find out soon. Back in the middle of July, Swindon Borough Council promised to fix all the winter potholes by mid-August. Here's what Jackie Moyles from the council's Street Smart team told me two months ago. We visited 65% of the streets in, in Swindon, the residential streets, and we fixed the potholes as we find them. And you'll have 100% of the potholes fixed by when? We're uh, the next three to four weeks we should hope So in four weeks' time, there'll be no potholes in Swindon? There may well be new potholes, I'm afraid. I mean, that, that's part But none of the, of the old ones? But the old ones should have gone. Well, four weeks later, the old ones were still there. It didn't happen. And a month later, in the August, Councillor Keith Williams came into the studio. The, po the current potholes, within a month, that those potholes will be fixed. Will you come back in a month? I will come back in a month. Right, <laughs> I'll deal. Do that. right now we're talking. <laughs> True to his word, two weeks ago, Councillor Williams, a month on from that chat, came back into the studio. This is what happened then. Keith Williams, do we have all of those potholes fixed Great. yet? As of the end of August, I'm very pleased to say all those potholes from last winter are fixed. Now that's good news. Thank you. How about this then for a challenge? Would you drive with a bowl of custard on your lap <laughs> along any Swindon road that anyone wants to nominate this morning? I think I probably would. You would? I would. Okay. Uh, we've got something on the, oh, someone on the phone. Lynn from Rodbourne, good morning. Morning. Do you want to talk about potholes? Oh, I was fed up with talking about potholes. We had one outside our house for nearly two years. Got in touch and they were down the next morning to fix it. They haven't touched the rest of the road. It still ruins the cars, doesn't it? What road's this, Lynn? Redcliffe Street. OK, so that's the road you're going to be driving down, Keith. Bowl okay. of custard. <laughs> you, you're happy to do that? You happy to do that? That's the road? Are you, you happy to hold the bowl for me, Lynn? <laughs> yes, I'll hold the bowl Right, for that's you. it. Right, we'll get that set up. Thank you very much, Lynn. And thank you very much, Keith, because now we're gonna, we're gonna, we really are going to find out, aren't we? So, last week, I headed down to Redcliffe Street, along with Councillor Keith Williams and Lynn from Rodbourne and our adjudicator, producer Richard Crowley. This is Councillor nice Keith Williams. This is Lynn. Spoke on the radio. Good morning. Lynn, Lynn from Rodbourne, as we call you on the radio. It's <laughs> <Yes>, me. <laughs> <laughs> Lynn from Rodbourne. So, what do you think? Well, the road's terrible. Councillor, are you confident we can drive along this road without spilling any custard? Well, I'm here this morning, so what does that say? <laughs> um, I will say, Lynn, that uh, this road is, is one of the worst roads we do have in Swindon, yeah. um, and that, that has actually been recognised. Uh, and what we're actually planning to do this year, this is completely unrelated with me being here today, this road is actually due to be resurfaced parts of it this year. Because as a result of the winter That's just damage, a coincidence, yeah? That is absolutely a coincidence, honestly. Honest to truth. Yeah. Um, it's actually partly because of the damage last year and because we've got quite large areas where there is damage it's not really suitable for actually putting pothole repairs in so there's actually been an area of resurfacing being done here later on this year yeah well i'll believe it when i see it <laughs> <laughs> if you can't trust a politician who can you trust Ooh. Ooh. <laughs> no don't start me on that please no. <laughs> So, the introductions are out of the way. Still to come this morning, we'll check the consistency of the custard and drive along Redcliffe Street. Find out if any of the custard spills on Councillor Keith Williams' lap this morning on Swindon's BBC Wiltshire. The Labour leader, Ed Miliband, will make his keynote speech at the party's annual conference in Liverpool today. It's a year since he took over following Gordon Brown's resignation. Harriet Harman was the acting leader in between. She joins me from the conference now. Good morning, Harriet. Good morning. Who are you sitting next to this year during the keynote uh, speech from the leader? Well, I'm sure I'll be sitting with my colleagues in the shadow cabinet. Well, you had a bad seat last year, didn't you? You were sat right next to Ed's brother, David. And uh, when Ed criticised the Iraq war, his brother said to you, you voted for it, why are you clapping? Are you going to be careful about what you clap about this year? Well, I will definitely be uh, supporting Ed Miliband for, for, for what he's saying. I think that it's difficult times for people and he's speaking up for their concerns. And I noticed that actually when it came to voting 
the people voting in the election in May earlier this year, actually there was a swing towards Labour and away from the Conservatives and away from the Lib Dems. So when it came to actually voting, I think people did, when they came into the ballot box, they did support Labour uh, more than they'd supported us previously and more than they were supporting the Tories and the Lib Dems. Well, you were campaigning then. You even came to Swindon in April, but it didn't help. We're st we've nice still got a day. Conservative council and we've still got two Conservative MPs. Why is that? Well, we did... Uh, gain seats in the uh, in the local elections um, and we think we you know we're, we're making progress you described gordon brown as hopeless is ed miliband worse because he's not doing very well in the opinion polls i didn't i think that that with a really difficult um, global financial crisis i think that the work that gordon brown did with other leaders around the world to stop the banks falling over it could have been immeasurably worse but i think that the government's mistake, this government's mistake, is to say that we're out of the woods, we're out of the danger zone, and that we're a safe haven, and to think that they can just uh, let things fend for themselves uh, and, and to really cut the economy and choke the life out of the economy, and I think that that's, that's what's gone wrong. And I never said Gordon Brown was hopeless. Not at the, at the New Year's Eve party? No. no. OK, the Times reported that you did. Harriet Harman, live from the Labour Party conference. Thanks very much. You're not talking to me on a handheld mobile phone while you're driving, are you? Oh, no, I've mended my ways. Never again. All right. Well, you pleaded guilty anyway um, to uh, driving without due care and attention. I'm reformed, it was. though. I'm a reformed motoring offender now. I'm glad to hear it. Harriet Harman, thanks for your time this morning. So last week, I headed down to Redcliffe Street, along with Councillor Williams and Lynn from Rodbourne and our adjudicator, producer Richard Crowley. Here's what happened when we drove down the road. It's the top half from here to the post box. So from here to the post box, that'll do me. So the post box yeah. is the end of the test. Yeah. Bring it on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I love your confidence. I've got a bowl of custard in my lap. Bring it okay, on. the bowl of custard is, <laughs> is between the councillor's legs right now. Okay, hands on head for the entire for the entire test. He's, he's putting his hands on his head. Uh, we've got uh, Richard Crowley here, the official adjudicator, and the official witness is Lynn from Rodbourne. Okay, so here we go. We're engaging first gear, and we're about to set off. I'm just going to let that rover go. Okay, here we go. Let's see. And uh, Richard, you're going to have to keep your eye on the custard because I have to keep my eye on the road. How does it look? It's looking good at the moment. It's wobbling. We're only doing 10 a miles an hour, though. It's wobbling a little we bit. really get closer to the legal oh. speed than <laughs> I would have thought. Keep in. So keep in, are you yeah, saying, yes, Lynn? In right yeah, here? Yeah. yeah. Oh, that's a bit it bumpy here. It is a bit here. bumpy here. Yeah. It is. It is. Yeah. Still doing less than 20 miles an hour, though, so I think... Because you can't go fast You can't go fast down here. That's okay, so the worst bit there. We're getting, we get, which, which is the bit worst uh, bit? That bit there? Yeah. We get to the post box and we stop here. Oh! Oh! oh the custard has just made it over the edge of the bowl, but the councillor doesn't have any on him. He has none on him. He's true to his word. He has proved that the potholes in Swindon are in such a condition you can drive down any street in Swindon with a bowl of custard on your lap and you'll be fine. Please don't invite me back on your show, Graham. <laughs> Lenny, you're going to shut up whinging about this road now? No! <laughs> <laughs> An emergency stop at the end. <laughs> <laughs>